Hello, dear friends, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Will Wisdom Interviews. I'm your host, Will Wisdom. You're watching. These are the Will Wisdom Interviews, and that's awesome. Um, today, we are going to be talking more about how to read and understand the scriptures. Um, I was recently reading from Jacques Philippe's book called To Life, and he talks about um, one of the hard sayings or the mysterious sayings of Jesus from the Gospels, probably up there in the top 10 baffling things that he said in the, in the Gospels, uh, from Luke chapter 19, verse 26. I tell you that to everyone who has will more be given, but from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. So if you dwell on that in perhaps the wrong way, it can become frustrating because you may focus on the negative aspect of that and, and think, well, what do I have? Even what I have is going to be taken away. That is the negative dwelling we want to avoid. At the same time, Jesus is establishing his divinity and his authority and when we encounter hard to understand scripture verses we should keep that in mind that you know he is the perfect teacher so a teacher a teacher is someone who tries to communicate truth and perhaps truth tr first of all the truth to people um and this is hard. Um, I know from my experience that classroom management can be a challenge. Um, so a teacher, ultimately what a teacher is called to do and their method is love. So Jesus is the perfect teacher because he's love and um, part of being a good teacher is establishing your authority um, in any case, Jacques Philippe discusses this um, passage, and I think he has some great insights for us. I'm going to read a couple of pages. One consequence of this is the emergence of a litigious society. Yes, people do sometimes have a right to seek reparations in court, but today it is common for someone who suffers something in the hands of someone else, even a member of the family, to haul the guilty party before a judge instead of confidently and responsibly facing the difficult situation, forgiving the wrong and shouldering his burdens for himself. In the long run, the way of acting, this way of acting undermines life in society by spreading the poison of mistrust. Praise and gratitude are the great remedies for the mentality of victimhood. Instead of complaining or seeking vindication, we are led to the acceptance of life as it comes to us, even with its weight of suffering and difficulties. We come to understand that the challenge before us is not to change our lives, but to change our attitude toward life, from caution and accusation to acceptance and confidence. We learn to welcome life with faith as a gift, even though it is different from what we expected. We discover that real life is far more beautiful and rich than the life of our daydreams. Again, this is difficult to accept at times, and I was having a hard time accepting it in reference to something that happened um, recently. This is a fundamental spiritual principle found in the gospel. Jesus speaks these mysterious words. I tell you that to everyone who has will more be given, but from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. In this way, he proclaims one of the most important laws of life. Someone filled with resentment and unhappiness, bitter that life is not as it should be, will be deeply disillusioned. Welcome back. I had a small technical issue. Um, I was saying, I was reading uh, where are we? All right. Um, in this way, he proclaims one of the most important laws of life. Someone filled with resentment and unhappiness, bitter that life is not as it should be, will be deeply disillusioned. 
On the other hand, people who are glad for what they have received and thank God for what befalls them will receive still more until finally being overwhelmed by God's generosity. I often meet people constantly at war with life. They are never satisfied and whatever happens feel that things should be other than they are. Their lives are spent waging futile crusades. At the root of this way of thinking lies unconscious anger, a kind of spite. Such feelings can energize people for a while so that they appear to be champions of generosity and justice. But in the end it doesn't work, for in the long term fruitfulness comes only from love. People who suffer in this way may need psychological help, and the practice of gratitude and praise is sure to be beneficial. When gratitude is the most fundamental disposition of one's heart, one is able to repeat Mary's words and mean them. So, yeah, so I'm going to take this example of a scriptural investigation in a, a specific book by a spiritual guide, Jacques Philippe. Um, and I'm going to talk about how to read and understand the scripture in general. First off, read it. Um, if you don't read it, you can't understand it, and you don't know it. Um, script, the Bible has a big, I would say, stigma about it. People hear the word the Bible, and they think like hyper-religion, um, whatever I don't know what do you think when you hear the word the Bible but what's important is to actually read it and uh, try to understand what it's saying um, together with that and this is the most important message of my whole of this whole video is prayer um, we need to pray about what we read and meditate scripture and prayer go together scripture is an aid to prayer and we pray about what we read in scripture um there's this phrase uh lectio divina which is a technique for reading the bible and i may be talking kind of about that i've never actually officially learned what lectio divina is but maybe this is related to it i know it's basically about praying the scripture um, so we ask God, come Holy Spirit, help us enlighten our minds. Um, yeah. Um, so another point I'd like to make is that, um, scripture, magisterium, and tradition all go together. Um, they're the three pillars of the church. Um, we know that Jesus holds the office of priest, prophet, and king, and those kind of go with uh, scripture, magisterium, and tradition, where scripture is the word of God, the prophecy of God. Uh, magisterium is the teaching authority of the church, um, the kingship, the kingship of God and of Jesus. Um, and tradition is the, the people um, and the priesthood of God. Uh, we're all, in a way, priests because we, we're called to offer our whole lives to God as an offering for his glory. Um, so we're called to share, through baptism, we all share in the priestly office of Jesus and also his kingship because we inherit the kingdom through our baptism and we also share in his prophetic office. We're all called to be prophets in some way, if only through just being who we are in the world. Um, we all have a, so the Bible is written for people. Um, we all have, we are the church. We all have a, a unique role to play in the story of salvation, the story of history, the the story of um, God's relationship with his people. Um, and this is a living reality. Um, so the, with the Holy Spirit, the Bible comes alive and we come alive. Um, the magisterium teaching authority of the church is basically summarized in the catechism of the Catholic Church 
um, which John Paul II calls a special gift. And indeed it is because it is a beautiful and rich text that lays out the basic teachings of the church. It's a, it, it's a prayerful experience to read because it, it ties together the, um, the scripture, the magisterium and the tradition, the lives and the teachings of the saints in a living dynamic, beautiful way um, that we can get a lot of inspiration from. So it's not just teaching, it's also inspiration. Um, the church also lays out for us the daily readings of the liturgy, which is a great way to read the Bible um, with the church in her daily readings, which are read at the mass every day around the whole entire world. And um, that's a great way to follow the scriptures and to delve into them uh, because the church in her wisdom through the centuries has come up with this formula for introducing the scriptures to us reading the scriptures it's also good to have our own personal reading and for uh, beginners or anyone I would recommend reading the gospels um, which are the life and words of Jesus, um, the heart of the scriptures, and um, going to daily mass or going to mass when you can, at least on Sundays, is a great way to be um, living the scriptures. Um, so taking a step back, reading the scriptures and prayer are part of what we would call a plan of life, which are um, things we do on a daily basis to grow in our relationship with God and to strive for holiness and the fullness of love, love of God, love of neighbor. Um, it, a plan of life gives us order and inspiration in our life directed by the Holy Spirit and there's a lot of things that go into a plan of life, and I'll mention some of them, but prayer is definitely key. And um, with that, we read the scriptures. Um, one thing that can help to understand the scriptures and as part of a plan of life is um, spiritual direction. So if there's something that comes up that we read, we can ask our spiritual director to maybe help us understand it and how how it applies to, to our daily lives, what God is telling us through that verse, what it means. Um, another important point I'd like to make is that um, the church has always held that the Bible is to be read as a whole. So while we may pray and meditate and contemplate a specific verse or set of verses in a day, um, it's important in general to read the, uh, as a whole, overall, to read the Bible as a whole, not to just take one verse and, um, make, make a religion or an idol out of it. Um, this is what Satan tried to do when he was tempting Jesus. He took verses from scripture and said, well, look at this. So isn't, why don't you, why don't you? do this why don't why don't you jump off the um the uh temple because you're god and it said it says in scripture um the angels will take care of you lest you dash your foot on a stone and jesus said well the scripture also says you shall not tempt the lord your god so um the fullness of the meaning of the Bible comes out when we read it as a whole because some verses talk about the importance of faith, for instance, um, whereas others talk about the importance of doing the will of God, um, and they both go together. Um, sometimes the Bible seems to contradict itself, but the, ultimately that is part of God's sublime wisdom and um, 
what was I going to say? Uh, his sublime wisdom and the the richness the richness of God's God's will for us. Um, you know, it says Satan is going to uh, uh, pull us apart like wheat or something, and um, you know, really challenge us, sift us like wheat, um, and. God, God kind of does the same thing to us, even more so. He, he prunes us, as my friend Kevin used to do. He would go like this, pruning, it's pruning time, um, when, when we would encounter something challenging in our mission to take care of the lost video game playing young men of the Bronx um, at the Cretona program. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to go back to my notes and we'll come back to that later. Um, so in addition to reading the Bible as a whole, a living whole, um, most importantly, we, we, we ask God for help. We pray, come Holy Spirit, dominate with Fidem, Lord, that I may see, um, Lord, that Dominate would sit, Lord, thy will that it be done, Father, thy will be done. Um, prayer and doing the will of God go hand in hand. Prayer and the, the Christian life go hand in hand. Um, one way to put it might, might be um, our spiritual lives, our relationship with God is fulfilled in prayer and it's lived out in the world. Um, in addition to asking God's help, it can be helpful to get help from others, other people. Um, first and foremost, the church. Um, we, I mentioned the catechism. We can talk to priests who have a special prophetic role. They, they share in Christ's prophetic role in a special way. So they have special wisdom to offer. Yes, priests aren't perfect. Um, there's a lot of bad priests, but there's also, you know, it's kind of a secret, but for people not in the church, but there's actually a lot of, a lot of really good priests. Um, and, um, <clears throat> or, you know, other experts reading books, talking to people, talking to family, um, perhaps getting some advice, mentioning it in confession, again, going to mass, maybe we participate in a Bible group or study, um, talking to our family. And there's also Google searching online, which I don't really recommend. There's a lot of, a lot of websites out there and you don't exactly know what you're going to come across. It may help, you know, but it just like, um, <laughs> doing your own medical research online is probably not as good as talking to a doctor, talking to your doc, a doctor whom you trust. And, um, I would basically recommend coming through all these means to your own prayerful understanding of scripture with the help of the Holy spirit. Um, and, in the context of the church. Um, an, an important thing besides this is silence, solitude, and stillness, um, where we put time and space aside. And this goes with contemplation. Um, it's like the Samaritan woman's encounter with Jesus, where, as it says, it was about noon, meaning the sun was blazing overhead. Everyone was in their homes, but this outcast woman was drawing water from the well, and that's in in the in the solicitude of that moment. Um, Jesus had a special encounter where with her, where he had a a normal conversation with her that quickly got really deep. And um, because she was humble enough to receive his his word and his message, um, 
uh, this simple woman, he revealed his identity to her um, in a way that he didn't reveal it, was not able to reveal it to um, the kings of the world, the Pharisees, the, the religious leaders, um, and many, many other people who, who were just too pr proud and their hearts were hard and they, they wouldn't hear what he hear him but she she was open to listening to him and they had that special encounter in a moment of silent solitude and stillness um it was like lucy encountering the wardrobe where it was an intimate um, setting unexpected um as it says in the book of wisdom he meets them in the ways um, with all solicitude. Um, so Lucy discovered this wardrobe in, um, the line, the witch in the wardrobe, and that changed her life. And then she was able to share this discovery with her brothers and sisters. Um, I think it's a nice comparison. Um, there's also, uh, this CD where Roy Showman gives his conversion story, which is his, his first contemplative encounter with the living God, which he had on Cape Cod in probably a setting similar to that of the Samaritan woman encountering Jesus, where he was alone in nature, um, just kind of, thinking and and God the Holy Spirit spoke to him and um, gave him this kind of touch of eternity where he he saw things from God's perspective from the first time and the meaning of life the the importance of of the moral life the the eternal uh, consequences or echo of our our actions good and bad in the world in our lives um you know he's also a a uh apostle uh, witnessing to his his experience as the samaritan woman was um so another thing that helps us understand scripture is time uh, sometimes things make sense after a period of time or at a certain time. Um, this is a complex idea with a lot of different types of examples, but um, time can be an important factor in reading and understanding the scriptures. Sometimes a verse we read at one time in our life won't make any sense but it will later on um uh, this this applies to um what's it called eschatology where um the history of the church is made manifest over time and perhaps some some prophecies about about the church or the salvation history make more sense over periods of time. Um, our life experience is, of course, important. This goes along with the idea of time. Um, one thing that can really help us understand the scriptures is the sacraments, um, the grace we receive from the sacraments, um, confession and the Eucharist, and of course, baptism. Uh, and the other sacraments um, where, where everything kind of suddenly makes sense. Uh, when we receive, when we receive uh, the Eucharist, we receive the body of Christ and we, we consume God, we consume the Holy Spirit. And this gives us a lot of divine wisdom that we wouldn't have otherwise. Also being in a state of grace, which we renew if we've lost it in confession. Um, 
in wisdom the book of wisdom chapter 1 verse 4 it says wisdom dwells not in a body in debt of sin so when we go to confession we we get back into a state of grace if we've lost it through mortal sin and um and then about the eucharist they recognize jesus in the breaking of the bread that's from luke chapter 24 verses 30 and 35. um did not our hearts burn within us as he opened the scriptures to us that's from just right in that section luke chapter 24 verse 32 um through the sacraments and through prayer jesus and the holy spirit open the scriptures to us um so what do i want to say next um about the priesthood the universal priesthood that we share where we share in jesus's priesthood of offering ourselves and our lives to god for his glory um that's where prayer and life go together uh um jesus is the high priest i think of um lord of the rings where Frodo, who represents Jesus and the priesthood, um, carries the weight of the sin of the world and finally destroys death by, well, getting his finger bit off by Schmeagel and um, the ring falling into the uh, fire. And um, so Jesus Jesus's mission that he took very seriously and still takes seriously is to redeem the world through the for, the forgiveness of sins and the coming of the Holy Spirit and um, he takes this mission very seriously and sometimes we might think Jesus is a bit too serious but you know that's for the good because um, he's also full of love he's a normal human being just like us um but yes he did have a special vocation a special identity as the son of god and the high priest the eternal high priest um so i think of uh frodo at the end of lord of the rings being taken away in that mysterious boat to some mysterious land where he he, he basically wasn't able to kind of enjoy the fruits of his own redemption the way other people were like his friend sam who got happily married to a nice hobbit lady and had a nice hobbit home with some nice hobbit kids and flowers and sunlight um and the joys of life that were the fruit of frodo's sacrifice frodo meanwhile had to be taken away on a boat to some place and um that's kind of like i think that's kind of like jesus uh where he leaves the the fruits and the joys of her, his redemption for us to live. Um, he says, um, what's it called? Uh, he says, um, and you will do greater things than these. So we live out, as I, as I was saying, we live the rest of the story we, uh, united to Jesus. Um, this is kind of getting on a corollary topic. I think that's just about all I have to say. Um, a word on vo vocation. It's not about trying to fit into something like, for instance, the dancing life in the world that I participate in. Um, it's about discovering who you are, what you love, and the role God gave you. Um, okay. Um, a word about the church. It's a living reality. It's dynamic. The three pillars I mentioned, scripture, magisterium, tradition, mutually complement, are mutually complementary as are the aspects of the plan of life. Um, and the church is the body of Christ. Okay. 
Um, a word to Protestants. Um, be the best Christian you can be. Come Holy Spirit. Ut unum sin, as Jesus said. It's not about debates. It's not about theological debates. The, the, the rift in the church, the differences we have between Protestants and Catholics, um, they're not about like solo fide, faith versus faith and works, or sola scriptura. Um, we all kind of get it. Um, let's, let's, uh, be one as Jesus said, and, you know, be happy, be the church. Um, we all want to do God's will. Um, Protestants have a lot to offer. Um, each one of us, just, just like every human being in general has a lot to offer. We're all unique. Uh, we all have gifts. Um, we know we all basically know what's right what's true what to do and who we are all right this has been a presentation of the will wisdom interviews i'm will wisdom you're watching that's awesome have a good day